Hi there, my name is Nabil. I hope that you will hear me well and that my bald head isn't too shiny on video. Uh, so, before we get into the talk, a little bit of background about me and the topic, of course. So, um, all you have to know about me is when I'm not researching and reading about the brain, psychology, productivity and business, I'm writing about these subjects, usually articles that I publish online. And today's topic is called the invisible t-shirt. Obviously, it's not about a t-shirt. It's actually about why some information is invisible to our brain, brains and how to change that. In other words, how to select what kind, which kind of information we pay attention to unconsciously. In particular, it could be opportunities. Before, so let's, let's start with a quick question. Um, have you found yourself in a room or at the office looking for something that you know to be right in front of you, but you can't see it, you can't find it? It could be headphones, your phone, um, laptop, folder, paper, whatever. Okay, so for me, as you may have guessed, it has always been a t-shirt. It started <laughs> during my childhood and still happens today. Last time it happened, it was two years BC, before Corona. I was at my parents' house and whenever, by the way, whenever I'm in my parents' house, I re-become the kid I once were. So anyway, I was there, I was, there I was, um, getting ready to go grab a coffee with my friends who were waiting for me outside in their car. So I had to hurry up, but I couldn't find my t-shirt. It was a black t-shirt with a Dragon Ball character on it. Um, I didn't find it, I had to hurry up, so I did what I do best, which was, Mom, did you see my black t-shirt with Vegeta on it? My mother has no idea who Vegeta is, yet she comes in, instantly finds the t-shirt, and off she goes, right? That wasn't the only interesting thing that happened that night. Later on, I was discussing, I was having a conversation with my friends and we were talking about business opportunities. At the time, my friends uh, wanted to launch a business and they were trying to figure out which opportunities they can seize at the time, yeah? And um, so we spoke about LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, Airbnb, all, all of these are successful businesses and we thought that um, these companies, actually what they did, they saw a need, an opportunity before anybody else and then they brought a solution for it. That's why they, they were successful. And then we concluded that actually opportunities are all over the place. They are in front of us, but all we, and all we have to do to succeed is to see the right opportunity and then seize it. Just like the t-shirt. Now, when you think of it, whether it's a t-shirt or an opportunity, it's exactly the same thing for your brain. It's information, right? And turns out our brains have a uh, limited capacity to process information. And we live in a world where everything is information, basically. You wake up in the morning on your phone, you have dozens of uh, mails, messages, you have um, social media, you have YouTube, you have all of these apps. Outside you have ads, uh, you have your daily conversation at work with family, all of this is information. Right? It's overwhelming for our brains. That's why our brains, to not get overwhelmed, cuts, it cuts uh, some of this information. It, some people call it, some, I mean, specialists, <laughs> to be precise, call it uh, selective attention. And this selective attention is carried out by um, a specific mechanism called the reticular activating system. And this is the only scientific word. I'm using uh, tonight and so what's this reticular activating system that makes us select information now to understand how it works imagine that your attention is a nightclub 
Okay, what's in the front of each nightclub? Exactly, a nightclub security guy. The guy who selects who goes in and who doesn't, usually through their shoes. Anyways, the reticular activating system is the nightclub security guy of your attention. Okay, so what's the difference? There is one difference between the nightclub security guy and the reticular activating system, which is you can actually negotiate with your reticular activating system. So how do you do that? Um, especially that your reticular activating system is a part of your subconscious mind. In other words, how do you tell your subconscious mind which kind of information it should pay attention to? So, okay, um, the way you do that, actually, okay, let's ask uh, a better question here. <laughs> how do you convince anyone? An easier question, rather. How do you convince anyone? You have, usually you have to do two things. First, you have to speak the same language because good luck convincing somebody if you don't speak the same language. And then you have to make, the second thing is you have to make your proposition interesting for your, for your counterpart. So you have to find what's, what could be interesting for your counterpart. For instance, if you want to work with me, well, you have a better chance of me accepting if you suggest that we talk about it while eating pizza. Why is that? Because I love pizza and I'm interested in eating pizza. So if you come up with a suggestion saying, okay, let's do this and eat pizza at the same time, I'd be interested, right? So actually you do exactly that with your brain. You have to speak the same language as your subconscious mind and you have to be convincing. So you have to know what What's, what could be interesting for your subconscious mind? So let's start with the language. Well, the language that your subconscious mind speaks is actually one word, which is goals. Okay, now you might be asking, why is that? Because actually goals are embodied in um, human behavior. Human beings are goal setting and goal achieving machines. You wake up in the morning, you go to the bathroom. That's goal one. Goal two, you go to the kitchen, you grab a coffee, breakfast, tea, that's goal two. Then you go back to your room, goal three, you dress up, Go goal four, you get the idea. It's like, wherever you are, you are moving from point A to point B, achieving a goal, setting and achieving a goal. So, goal setting is the language that your subconscious mind is a language, rather, that, you, that your subconscious mind can speak and understand, right? So, uh, how do you select information based on a goal? It can be tricky, right? What you do is, okay, first you define what kind of information you want to pay more attention to. Say, for instance, you want to spot more um, nice buildings or monuments around the city or really nice spots taken to take a picture of, stuff like that. So your goal would be, okay, I would be, uh, you'd like to become a decent photographer or I'd like to start a social media page with photography um, and picture from my city or elsewhere, right? So for instance, my friends who were trying to launch a business, they were looking for opportunities. Well, they could set a goal saying, okay, in six months, I want to start a food, uh, a business. <laughs> Sorry, I love food. A business in the food domain, right? That's a goal. So that's your first step. First step is you set a goal that's related to the information that you want to your brain to start to catch. Then come the trickier, tr trickier part of the process, which is convincing your brain. So we have to reverse the question as we as we did with me and pizza, right? The question becomes. What could be interesting for your subconscious mind? And that's also one word, which is survival. Exactly. Your subconscious mind, one of its main uh, functions is to keep you alive. And knowing that, okay, now we might be asking, what does, how, how could you just take a goal and make it essential for survival? It seems unlikely, right? Well, actually, 
um, there is a specific feature of your subconscious mind that you can leverage, which is, and this is very important, your subconscious mind doesn't make a difference between what you imagine and a real life experience. For your subconscious mind, it's exactly the same thing. Okay, so how is that useful, right? That's useful because actually if you pick a goal and you imagine yourself doing it every day for five or 10 minutes, whatever, every day you imagine yourself doing it, over time, your subconscious mind will think that this goal is a part of who you are and a part of survival instincts is to preserve your self-image, who you are basically. So if this goal becomes a part of you, like achieving this goal becomes in a way a survival instinct, right? And then your subconscious mind would be, aha, uh -huh, I should probably pay more attention to um, nice monuments or good looking streets or I don't know, a tree <laughs> to take a picture, right? It could pay more attention to uh, business ideas or app ideas or articles on the internet that are related to what you want to do. It could be more, in your subconscious mind could be interested. If you're looking for a job, your subconscious mind could start to catch job opportunities or ideas about creating your own job, actually, right? That's, that's the point. And then you start, and then, and that's how, sorry, and that's how you start to see the invisible information, the previously invisible information. Now you can see it because your subconscious mind is, your reticular activating system goes like, uh huh, I can, I, I should let this information in, right? Okay, so last question now. Does this actually work? Well, um, that's actually how I got here. Um, into TEDx. Uh, English is my third language. I have never done public speaking training or uh, any other official um, speaking events, right? But <laughs> I spent a couple of months, I set a goal, which is doing um, public speaking, and I spent a couple of months imagining myself doing the speech, right? And then one day I was in the subway and I was scrolling through LinkedIn. And then suddenly I stopped. I saw TEDx USTP. So that was an invisible t-shirt that I saw. I was like, uh-huh, uh -huh. I could actually um, send, um, send them an invitation because these guys are basically organizing public speaking events. So it would make sense to connect to them. Put my phone in my pocket, Life goes on, 20 minutes later, I'm out, I'm heading to the gym and I take my phone to put some music on to get ready for the workout. And then I saw two notifications, one of which was TEDx saying, hi, thank you for the uh, connection. Um, we wish you a nice day. So I smiled, put some music on and put my phone in my pocket, took exactly two steps, I froze, my mind threw an idea at me, which was, wait a minute, these guys are active, which means if I send them a message, they could see it and they could probably reply. That was the second invisible t-shirt. So I wrote them, hey guys, um, if you happen to be looking for a speaker with interests in um, brain science, psychology, productivity, business, yeah, you know, you can uh, let me know. <laughs> and here I am. So before uh, before I leave you, uh, I want you to remember, I want to tell you three things, okay? So the first one is you don't fully control your attention. Um, many of the information that you pay attention to, you pay attention to unconsciously. Second, you can change that. You can change that by setting a specific goal and imagining yourself doing, working on that goal every day. Better even if you can work on that goal a little bit every day, you will start to um, see more of, of the information that you, you want to see, actually. Right. So in other words, actually, when you communicate your goals to your subconscious mind, it makes you see the invisible. 
And third and last, thank you very much for listening and have a great day. This was Nabil. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.